the unit circle. A circle with center at 0, 0 and radius 1 is called a unit circle. The equation of this circle would be x squared plus y squared equals 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, 0 are all on this circle. So points on this circle must satisfy this equation. Let's pick a point on the circle. We'll choose a point where the x equals 1 half. If the x equals 1 half, what is the y value? So what we're doing is we're looking at this point on the circle. Well, we know the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So all I did was substituted x with 1 half. I solved for y, and it turns out that y is plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Since our ordered pair is in quadrant 1, y is going to be positive. So it turns out that our ordered pair is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. We know all of the sides of this triangle. The bottom leg is just the x value of the point, the other leg is just the y value, and the hypotenuse is always 1 because it is a radius of the circle. So here's our triangle and I made our triangle a little bit bigger. Well, let's figure out the trigonometric functions. Remember the radius is 1, the x value is a half, the y value is the square root of 3 over 2. We're going to be going from theta. Remember, theta is the inside angle. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Do you notice anything interesting about the ordered pairs in the sine and the cosine? Well, the sine is the y value, and the cosine is the x value in the ordered pair. Find the exact values of the trigonometric functions of pi over 4. Remember, pi over 4 is the same thing as 45 degrees. Here's my triangle, and we're looking for the ordered pair right here. It's where the terminal side intersects with the circle. So here's the picture again. And of course, up here is the point that's on the circle. And of course, the radius is 1. Now let's remember something about this right triangle. If this angle is 45 degrees, so is this angle. It has to be 45 degrees. And this is 90 degrees. Since this is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, whatever this value is, is the same thing as this value. Okay? So, here's my equation of the circle. Now remember, the circle is out here going like this. Since the sides are the same, I'm just going to call them both x. So instead of having x squared plus y squared, we're just going to have x squared plus x squared. Now I'm going to solve for x. And it turns out x is the square root of 2 over 2. Hopefully you remember that you cannot have a square root in the denominator. So if you have 1 over the square root of 2, you need to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 which would give us the square root of 2 over 2. Well, if that's what the x value is, that's also what the y value is. We're continuing from our last screen. Well, here's our x value. Here's our y value. Now, remember, the y value is the sine, and the x value is the cosine. So the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2 and the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. The reason is it's the square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2, which is 1. And here's our unit circle. It's a good idea that you have a copy of this with you. This is where I found that unit circle. It's kind of nice because it's in colors. You should memorize the unit circle. It's really going to help you out. This is a great reference because you can figure out the trig functions of all these angles quickly. If you are asked for the exact trigonometric function, that does not mean a decimal. If you put a decimal in when I asked for an exact function, you're going to get it wrong. 
periodic properties. Now this is kind of interesting, and we've talked a little bit about the sine and the cosine and the tangent. But let me just make our unit circle. And what this is saying is, here's my initial side. Okay, And let's just make this my terminal side. And let's just say that, and let's make this theta. Okay, And here's our x, y point. What this is saying is that from theta, if I add 2 pi or 360 degrees, I'm going to end up right back at my original. Let's look at another one. Oops, I'm missing a little bit, but that's okay. Here's my initial side. And let's say this is the terminal side this time. And here's my angle theta. If I add 2 pi, or 360 degrees, I'm going to end up back at my original theta. So the x, y are going to be exactly the same. Let's talk about tangent for a second. Here's another circle. Here's my initial side. And let's say that here's my terminal side. Now we know that this point is going to be negative x and y. Okay, so our tangent is going to be negative. Here's my theta. What this is saying is if I add pi, which is 180 degrees, I would end up down here. And that's saying that this ordered pair and this ordered pair would give me the exact same tangent. Well, it would, because the tangent is when you divide these and you would end up with a negative. And the tangents when you divide these and you end up with a negative. So that's why it's only 180 degrees. And of course, the cosecant, secant follow the sine and cosine, and the cotangent follows the tangent. Let's talk about it a little further. Here's the sine of 45 degrees. So let's just put that in here. Here's my initial side, and then here's my terminal side, and so this is 45 degrees. If I add 360 degrees to it, notice I end up right back at the same thing. So the sine of 45 is the same thing as the sine of 405. Once again, if I, let me make my picture here, and here's my initial side, here's my terminal side, Okay, and we have 420 degrees. So what that is, is this all the way over to here. So basically what we're doing is we're subtracting the 360. So I'm taking out this 360, and what do we end up with? This right here, and that turns out to be 60 degrees. So the sine of 420 is the same thing as the sine of 60 degrees. So what happens when we have a circle that has a radius other than 1? Well, this is the formula we're going to follow. Basically, all we're going to do is we're still going to look at that ordered pair. It's going to be on the terminal side for theta. But instead of x squared plus y squared equals 1, remember that would be a circle of radius 1, we're going to have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Of course, r is going to be our radius. And then we're going to be using these formulas for sine, cosine, tangent but they're pretty much exactly what we've been doing. So let's look at one. Find the exact values of each of the six trigonometric functions of an angle theta if negative 3, 3 is a point on its terminal side. So here's our point. Here's my triangle. We have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now the thing to remember is that neither one of these tell us what our radius is. This is actually our x, okay? This is this here. And the negative 3 is the y part. That's here, okay? It's not telling us our radius, so we need to figure that out. 
but it's really easy because we know our x and y. So I'm just going to substitute in x and y, and I'm going to solve for r. And it turns out that our radius is plus or minus 3 the square root of 2. Now remember that we're not going to have a negative. Our radius can't be negative. So this is going to be our radius. Let's look at the functions. So remember, r is 3 the square root of 2. To figure out the sine of theta, we're going to take y over r. Well, y is negative 3, and r is 3 the square root of 2. When you reduce it, you'd end up with negative the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine is x over r, which is the x value 3 over 3 the square root of 2. That would give us positive the square root of 2 over 2, and so on. I think you get the idea. I want you to try this one on your own. Press pause, try it, and play to see the solution. So let's look at the solution. Here's my picture. Here's negative 1, negative 2. I get r to be the square root of 5. Remember, we're putting negative 1 in for x and negative 2 in for y. And here's my trigonometric functions. The sine of theta is y over r, negative 2 over the square root of 5. Remember, we need to simplify it. That would give us negative 2 the square root of 5 over 5. The cosine of theta then is negative the square root of 5 over 5. The tangent is 2. The cosecant is negative square root of 5 over 2. The secant of theta is negative the square root of 5. And the cotangent of theta is 1 half. Now, some of you are probably questioning, well, didn't you just tell us that the cosine is the x value and the sine is the y value? That's true, but only on a unit circle, only when r is 1. Let's talk about the calculator here for a second. You need to change the mode on the calculator when going from degrees to radians. And your mode key is found right here under the quit key. When you go into mode, you're going to have all of these, and right now it's on degrees. You're going to want to over arrow and enter on radian. So use your calculator to find the approximate value of each expression rounded to two decimals. So the first one is the sine of 28 degrees. It's degrees, so your calculator needs to be in degrees. Hopefully you get 0 0.47. The cotangent, remember, is 1 over the tangent. You should get approximately 1.43. Next we have the cosine of pi over 7. I know that this is in radians because there isn't a degree symbol sitting up here. The cosine of pi over 7, remember to change your calculator into radians, is approximately 0 0.90. The cosecant of 2 pi over 3 is approximately 1.15. The sine of 1. Well, once again, I don't have a degree symbol here, so we know that this is in radians. So hopefully your calculator is still in radians. The sine of 1 is approximately 0 0.84. Thanks for watching.